Time is a curious thing. Sometimes I feel like it was yesterday. Sometimes it's, I guess, quite literally a lifetime ago. Mark Barden's son, Daniel, was a student at Sandy Hook Elementary, a seven-year-old with an outsized sense of empathy. We used to kind of jokingly call him the caretaker of all living things because um, he would li literally stop and pick up the worms off the sidewalk and put them in the grass so they wouldn't burn in the sun. Or he would carry the big carpenter ants out of our kitchen because they thought, he thought they should be outside with their family. But on December 14th, 2012, a heavily armed man burst into his classroom in Newtown, Connecticut and started shooting. This probably is the worst I have seen or uh, the worst um, that I know of any of my colleagues having seen. We always thought that it was going to be us next. After like when the round of shooting stops, it was like, oh, it's going to be us next. Nicole Renee Hawk, now 17, remembers back 10 years ago hiding in her second grade classroom. After what felt like hours, we had, we had people knocking on the door saying that it was them, and then we started getting let out, told us to close our eyes, which thankfully I did. There's, I know some people who didn't, and now they have to suffer with that image in their minds, but luckily I kept my eyes closed and we walked out there safely. As word spread, parents rushed to the firehouse to pick up their children. And the, the line at the first grade and all the grades kept getting smaller and smaller, and most of the people were gone, and I was like, where's Daniel's class? Nicole Hockley recalls searching for her son, Dylan. And I said, where's the rest of the class? And they said, I don't know. And I looked down at the children that were there, and I recognized Dylan's reading partner, a beautiful, intelligent girl. And her eyes were just... Um, She was just staring, and um, and I and I just backed away. People started saying, "Tell us what's happening." He said, "If you are still waiting here, then the person you're waiting for isn't coming back." Um, and the room just erupted in chaos. And that's that's where we learned that. That's where we learned that that Daniel had been shot to death hiding in a closet in his first grade classroom. In the end, 20 first graders and six adults were dead. In the decades since 20-year-old gunman Adam Lanza's rampage, debates have ignited in the United States over mental health, access to guns, and how best to secure schools. For the people closest to the horror, marking this moment is mixed with anger, profound loss, and still some hope for change. The murder of their children drove Hockley and Barden into advocacy, working to try to save other children from the same fate. For me, I feel like it's a very appropriate way to honor Daniel because I've always thought he was going to do such wonderful things in this world with that beautifully, naturally developed sense of compassion and awareness of others, and it was taken from him. And I feel a very real sense of responsibility to try to fill those enormous shoes in whatever way I can. I had um, talked at Dylan's funeral on the 21st of December about, um, about that change needed to come from this. And I said at his service, I didn't know what that change was, but I felt that, you know, we couldn't have just lost our son and had 26 people killed and nothing come from it. Barden and Hockley started a nonprofit organization called Sandy Hook Promise. The group aims to educate students, teachers and others about the warning signs that could help identify potential mass shooters and ensure authorities are alerted when such signs are seen. More than 18 million people have participated in the group's programs. The group says at least 11 school shooting plots have been foiled in recent years because of the training. It's very hard for me to think about the fact that it's been 10 years since Dylan was killed um, because, it, and you know, it's also just like a blink of an eye and I could still look in the rear view mirror and expect to see him sitting in his car seat in the back seat. But 
I have never lost hope in people and our ability to do the right thing. So I wish now that, you know, having been 10 years later, that no more school shoot shootings were happening and that gun violence was a thing of the past. Um, it's probably going to take more than another 10 years to get there. But um, as long as we have the will, we'll just keep moving forward. It's not something that changed me. It's something that is who I am. So because of it, like, the maturity kind of developed into me. And also, like, it also kind of made me a little angry <laughs> that, like, 10 years after, it's actually becoming more frequent than less. So it's definitely made me an angrier person, politically at least. And I think that I care a lot because of it, I care a lot more about things that normal high schoolers shouldn't.